uh, chapter 6, um, section 7, normal as approximation to binomial. binomial. Normal as approximation to binomial. Um, if these two conditions are met, now this is important, that n, that's our sample size, times p, do you remember p and q where p is a success and q is a failure? So if n times p is greater than or equal to 5 and n times q are greater than or equal to 5, then the probabilities from a binomial probability distribution can be approximated by using these formulas. Okay, uh, The mean is n times p. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. Now, whenever you're asked to, to figure this out using, you know, if we have a binomial probability distri distribution, you need to always make sure you check that n times p is greater than or equal to 5 and n times q is greater than or equal to 5. Because if both of those aren't met, you can't use this. All right. We've already covered binomial probability distributions, but quick review of that. The procedure must have a fixed number of trials. The trials must be independent. Each trial must have all outcomes classified into two categories. The probability of success remains the same in all the trials. So it'd be like having a boy or a girl, uh, flipping a coin, getting heads or tails, things like that. All right. So again, these two are met. Then you can find the mean and the standard deviation like this, and we have a normal distribution. All right, now, for continuity correction, it depends on, you know, to, to work out and find a probability with continuity corrections, it would depend on the wording in the problem. If the problem says at least, then the x value that you use needs to be 0.5 smaller than the actual x value. So you can see this graph right here shows you, or this figure right here shows you that if we wanted to know at least 235, so say maybe I wanted to know the, the probability of my weight was at least 235, then I would want to use an x value of 234.5. All right, if you know we have the wording more than, we want to add 0.5 onto the x before we find the z-score. If the wording says at most, I want to add 0.5 onto the actual x value. If the x value says fewer than, subtract 0.5 from the actual x value. And then exactly, you know, if I want to know the probability exactly 235, I have to find a z-score for 235.5, and I have to find a z-score for 234.5, and find the areas associated with those z-scores, and subtract, say, the larger area minus the smaller area. Okay, That will give you exactly 235. So let's see if we can uh, find a problem. All right, so let's see if a normal approximation would be suitable for this scenario here. For a normal distribution with n equals 53 and p equals 0.7, state whether it is whether or not it is suitable to use a normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. Okay, so the way that we figure that out, we can say well, n is 53, so n times p needs to be greater than or equal to 5, and n times q needs to be greater than or equal to 5. All right, p is 0.7, so this is 53 times 0.7, see what that is, and then q then would be 0.3, right, because n, I'm sorry, because p times, or p plus q must equal 1. p plus q must equal 1, so that'll be 53 times 0.3. All right. So 53 times 0.7 is 37.1, and 53 times 0.3 is 
is 15.9. So both of those are greater than 5. So could we use a normal approximation? Yes, they're both greater than 0.5. All right. The actual continuity correction type problems would be something like this. All right. The value given below is discrete. Use the continuity correction and describe the region of the normal distribution that corresponds to the indicated probability. Probability of more than three passengers who do not show up for a flight. All right, so the wording here, we have more than. So if we go back here, for more than, it's going to be to the right of, we add 0.5. So in our problem, or the problem I was looking at, we had three, so to the right of 3.5, okay? To the right of 3.5. All right, this problem will take a little time, um, but maybe we could do exactly. So for exactly, we want to know we have exactly 144. So I'm going to need to find a few things for exactly. Remember exactly I'd want to I'd have to find an area for 0.5 more and an area for 0.5 less. So let's see. So my x values would be 144.5 and 143.5 because I'd have to add 0.5 and subtract 0.5. So in one of my areas I'd have x equals 144.5 and in the other area I have x equals 143.5. more and 0.5 less. All right. So, how can we find mu? How can we find sigma? What is p in this problem? It says that he crossed p's in such a way that 25% of the 552 offspring P's were expected to have yellow pods. So what does that mean that P is equal to? 0.25. So for both of these problems, P equals 0.25. So Q would equal to 0.75. All right, for both of these problems, we need to find mu and we need to find sigma, which is going to be the same for both problems. Mu is n times p. Sigma, the standard deviation, is the square root of n times p times q. So we just need to figure out that once for both of these. All right. All right, so in our problem, n is 552. So our mean, 552 times 0.25. So I got 138. Our standard deviation is the square root of 552 times 0.25 times 0.75. All right, so I get the square root of 103.5 <clears throat> or about 10.17 <coughs> or 10.2.
All right. However, if I was going to use that in a um, formula, I would suggest keeping it as exact as possible. So I'm going to write this out to a few more decimal places because I have to use that in a z-score formula. All right. So I have to do two different z-score formulas. This z-score formula is 144.5 minus, what did I get from my mean, 138, divided by the standard deviation. Again, it's a long decimal, but I would still suggest keeping that as exact as possible. Even though you may not think about it like it is, that's actual rounded as, it, as well. It's just carried out a few places. All right, so that's going to give me a z-score of, let's see, That's going to give me a z-score of, and I'm going to round the two places, 0.64. We'll use that to find an area. And then we need to find a z-score for this other value, 143.5 minus 138 over 10.173497. That gives me a z-score of 0.54. All right, so the reason, again, why I had to do two for this continuity correction is we wanted the probability of exactly 144, all right? And so I have to use continuity correction with that. Add 0.5 from the x, subtract 0.5 from the x. I have the z-scores that I need, so now I need to find the area that corresponds to a z-score of 0.64. All right, so I'm going to go to my z-score chart and go to 0.64. That gives me 0 0.7389. 0 0.7389. That's the probability for that. Now I need to go to a z-score of 0 0.54. 0 0.54. 0.7054. Seven zero five four to find the probability of exactly one forty four. I'm going to have to say point seven three eight nine minus point seven zero five four. And I get point zero three three five. So the probability of getting exactly 144 of those, I think it was P's in this example, is 3.35%. So let's type that in so we can feel good about ourselves. Around the four decimal places, 0 0.0335. I mean, your teacher actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> Every once in a while, I do. <laughs> 